hope you guys liked that little ASMR situation I did in the beginning. I did it so you could have a little bit of calm and relaxation before we start this very stressful but needed conversation. So let's get started. If you don't already know, my name is Lexi and for a good period of my life, I wanted to be left alone. I wanted to sit in a little corner and I didn't want anyone to see me. I hated being perceived in a good light and a bad light being perceived at all was something that gave me so much anxiety, but I never lived as my true self. Fast forward to now, I am perceived basically every single day, whether it's in my everyday life or on this YouTube channel. And it was all because I took the steps I needed to in my personal life to get over my fear of being perceived. And here's how I changed that. First, we have to start with the whys. As in, why do you feel this way? Why are you scared of being perceived? I think the most common reason that people give is they don't want to disappoint others. More specifically, they don't want to disappoint their parents. This is probably was one of the hardest things for me to get over. Most of my life, I wanted to be a doctor. Most of that came from how people reacted when I said I wanted to be a doctor. Whether it was a stranger or whether it was someone I knew, there was always such a warm and welcoming feeling that came with the proudness of me saying that I wanted to be a doctor. It made me feel like I was going down the right path because others thought that that was the right path for me. How are they supposed to know that's what's right for me when I never showed my true self because I was so afraid of being perceived. The initial warm and welcoming feeling that came from saying I wanted to be a doctor was only temporary and it was really only at the start of my journey. None of those people are walking the path with you. When I was in school pulling all-nighters and crying when I would wake up in the morning and no, not in a good way at all, none of those people were there. I think even with a support system, you still spend a lot of time alone on your journey in life. Your support system may help a little bit. They may take a pebble out of the way so you don't trip and fall while you're running. But what's the point? You're just getting to the finish line that you don't want to cross a lot quicker. You may think you've won because you made the people around you proud. And don't get me wrong, that's an amazing feeling. But that feeling doesn't last forever. The disappointment that you feel within yourself, well, that doesn't really go away. It only goes away when you face your desires and live as your true self. I think one of my biggest regrets in life was not being able to admit to myself and the people around me that I wasn't happy with what I was doing. I think I knew early on in college that maybe the path that I was taking was not something that I really wanted. But I thought that if I pushed through, I would mold into this version of myself that made others proud of me. And maybe sooner or later, I would feel proud of myself. But I was just molding into a facade of what I wanted myself to be and not who I truly desired to be. I also think the desire to impress people comes from self-worth, especially when it comes to parents. You want to feel like the sacrifices your parents made were worth it. And that belief makes you feel like your life has no meaning unless your parents are proud of you. I think I see this especially with first gen children. And I'm saying this from a second person's perspective, not a first person's perspective. But I will say that the sacrifices that immigrant parents make is beyond the comprehension of most people. And first gen children see and hear those sacrifices every day. They live with that every single day day. And that's an almost unbearable weight to carry. You want to feel like the sacrifices that your parents made were worth it, but the ability to live your desired life is a privilege that your parents never got to have because they were too busy trying to survive. It's a privilege that comes from the sacrifice of leaving everything they know in the only country they've ever known. They made that sacrifice for you and they felt like you were worthy of that sacrifice. You just have to see that within yourself. Your life has meaning outside of your accomplishments and outside of your parents' desires. And I'm not sitting here saying that your parents are going to be 100% supportive. Let's be realistic here. Especially if you're not making any money, they're probably not going to be as supportive as you would hope. But what I'm saying is it'll all be worth it when you're living a life that you desire. Now let's say you are living as your true self. You finally take the steps needed to be who you want to be and live the life that you want to live. But now you're losing friends, your parents are disappointed in you, and your true self is being rejected. You are now being perceived in not a great light. That's what you tell yourself to convince yourself that sitting in a corner where no one could see you 
is worth it. It's worth not being happy every day. It's worth not being yourself. This pain that you feel every single day when you live a life of not being perceived is worth it if the people around you like you and are proud of you. I told myself those things too because honestly saying those things was a lot easier than the actual truth. When I was not being my true self, it was really easy for me to face rejection because after all, they're rejecting a version of me that's not actually me. But if I lived a life that I truly wanted and became the person that I truly wanted and people still didn't like me, I don't know if I could genuinely take that. I think the reason why I hid my true self for so long is because I think that I looked at my true self from a child's perspective. The reason why I hid my true self is because I wanted to protect my true self. I think when you think of your dream life and dreams in general, they're often looked at as childish. So when I think about my dream life and my desires in life, I always think about the younger version of me. The child who thought the moon and the stars were way too close. And the child who never actually considered her dreams to be dreams because it was just what the future was going to be. I think we all want to protect that younger version of ourselves in ways that we feel like other people were not able to do for us. A part of us knows that if we actually protected our younger selves from the beginning, then we'd be living our dream lives and we wouldn't be hiding who we truly are. But sometimes that protection's just way too much and we become the helicopter parents of our true desires. That's when we convince ourselves that hiding is the best option than living our true lives. We convince ourselves that daydreaming about our dreams is enough to get us through the day, and then we spend the rest of our lives just dreaming and not actually living. All of this because we're so afraid that the real version of ourselves, the people who we are to our core, will get rejected and nobody will like that version of us. But here's the thing, and I learned this truthfully the hard way. Not everyone is going to like you. You could do everything someone says, do everything they want, and they will still find a reason not to like you. And truthfully, if I'm going to be brutally honest, you do not want to be the person that everyone and their mother likes. You will look like a fucking idiot. And you should feel like one too. A person who stands for nothing falls for anything. Having a backbone causes people not to like you because they can't just walk all over you. Stand tall and proud of who you are and how you're living and I promise you, it'll all work out in the end. Going further into dream lives. I think everyone has an idea of what their dream life is like or what it'll be like. The life that you've been dreaming about since you were a kid. Yeah, as you grow older, that dream may change a little bit, but I feel like everyone has a sense of what it is. There are many reasons as to why someone doesn't live their dream life. They don't have the money, they don't have the connections, or they're just not physically and mentally ready. And all of those reasons are valid reasons. Life constantly is going to be throwing you curveballs. And sometimes you are just truthfully not ready to get hit in the back of the head with an 80 mile per hour baseball. Let's be real. I don't want to talk about those reasons specifically. I want to talk about why those reasons exist and why you keep on telling yourself that. There is a way deeper meaning and that is your fear of change in being uncomfortable. You're afraid that if you spend the money and get the degree that you'll never be able to find a job and you'll never be able to use the degree and you'll just be sitting here in debt with a useless degree. You're afraid that if you do get your dream job, you'll just feel alone because you're in a new city and a new place with new coworkers that you don't no. And you're afraid that you're going to be behind in your dream career because you didn't spend enough time preparing for it. You are just afraid. Being afraid comes with touching the tip of being uncomfortable. All of these things are possible. I will not deny that. But the fact that you're sitting here worrying about all of these random possibilities means that you are more ready for change than you think. 
Do you think that people who are underprepared in their lives sit around and think about how underprepared they are? No, they don't. Because if they did sit around and think about it, they would make the changes necessary to be prepared. You are more worthy of the change that you want in your life. I'm a firm believer that change wouldn't come if you weren't ready because change wouldn't come if you weren't taking the necessary steps for that change. And honestly, sometimes it feels like change happens overnight. Like it was a random fluke and nobody expected it, including yourself. And you just feel so overwhelmed that all this change happened out of nowhere. One day you're employed, and the next day you're living your dream job. It's so confusing. And yes, in the moment, it genuinely feels that way, but you spent years preparing for this moment. You spent years getting a degree. You could have even spent years applying for jobs with the way the job market is right now. You spent hours preparing for job interviews. You took all of these little steps to be able to get that job. Maybe you got the acceptance letter overnight, but that doesn't mean that all the steps were, that were taken happened overnight. It's the same thing as if you're applying to a school. You would not be able to get into a program of your dreams if you didn't have anything to put on the application. The application is years of hard work and dedication into who you wanted to be. And now, you finally get to live in that change. Personally, for me, I've spent most of my life struggling with my weight. Recently, I lost a significant amount of weight. I feel more comfortable in my body. I have way more energy. And overall, I finally feel how I wanted to feel for years. But that change didn't even happen within the six months that it took for me to lose 50 pounds. I started my weight loss journey two years ago when I got out of college. I am just now seeing the results. And that's because it took years, literal years, to help me reverse my relationship with food because that was the only way that I would ever live a healthy life and be in the body that I desired. But that took work that nobody else saw. And yes, maybe it does look like I lost weight in six months, but I dedicated years of my life to this process. That's the sacrifices that come with being who you want to be. And yes, was I uncomfortable? Hell yeah. Life is uncomfortable. Pushing yourself is uncomfortable. You are going to be uncomfortable. That's where change comes from. Everything you do in life has been preparing you for the next moment. But in order to start your new life, you have to let go of the old one. It's the art of letting go. I started to look at every decision in my life like this. If it doesn't work out, will I regret the possible outcomes? more than I will regret not trying in the first place. When I look back at my long 23 years of life, yes, my long 23 years of life, although I don't look it, please don't tell me I look it, I will cry. I always seem to have regrets in the things that I never tried in the first place. I regret not doing things more than I regret doing things and it going wrong. I let go of the mentality of what if everything goes wrong and held on to the mentality of what if everything works out in the end. So let go of the life that no longer serves you because your new life is waiting for you. We know some of the reasons as to why we're afraid of being seen, but what are the next steps to getting over this fear? What can we do to change our fear of being perceived? Personally, for me, and a big part of it for me, was to start from within. You have to find worth within yourself. I let the fear of others not liking me turn into me not liking myself. Self-hatred became a defense mechanism for me. And the only way to change programming is to rewrite the code. And that's what I did. I first started with what I didn't like about myself. So I sat down and wrote down everything. And when I say I wrote down everything, I mean everything. I wrote down everything that I did not like about myself. And I wrote down what I wanted from my life and what my desired life was and how what I'm doing now prevented me from living my desired life. Write it down. Write down everything. And then the next step is going into why you don't like that part of yourself. And I don't mean anything simple. I don't mean, oh, I want a flat stomach because the girls at school have a flat stomach. 
I mean, go deeper than that. Why do you feel the need to look like the other girls in school? Personally, for me, I really struggle with understanding other people's point of view. I wanted to understand the people around me on a deeper level. And when I constantly felt like people needed to think like me, it caused me to be angry and impatient. And that was the deeper level of it. I wanted to not be a person who constantly got angry and was irritable. I want to be a patient and kind person. And that is the deeper meaning of why I want to understand the people around me. But first, I had to be that for myself. If I worked out and I didn't like the way my body looked, instead of sitting there and getting mad at myself for not looking how I want to look, I have to look at it from a completely different perspective. You are able to move your body with ease every single day. You're able to eat healthy and nutritious meals for every single meal you have in a day. Of course, unless you stop by Taco Bell. I am taking the steps every day for my desired body. And that within itself is a privilege and something that I need to acknowledge when I'm sitting around being impatient and being angry with myself. Instead of sitting around wasting time thinking about all the things that you don't have now, think about how all the things that you have now is enough to make you who you want to be. You just have to be patient with yourself. This goes into my next step, which is the law of detachment. Well, you can look at it like this. Instead of focusing on the outcome, you need to focus on the process. What did, what did Denzel say? I think he said dreams without goals are just dreams. If you focus on too much of what you expect the outcome to be, you'll never take the steps needed in the first place. This was also the basis of Atomic Habits by James Clear, one of my favorite self-help books. Everybody expects to do a complete 180 in one day, and they expect to be a completely changed person in one day. So when the next day they don't do a 180 and they just move up 20, they look at it as a failure. I'm gonna read a quote from James Clear and he said, over the span of moments that make up a lifetime, these choices determine the difference between who you are and who you could be. So what you need to do is focus on who you are today and what you're doing today. You'll never become the version of yourself you want to be when you focus too much on how far away you are from becoming it. Change is closer than you believe and even the change you may want may not even come. That's why it's so important to focus on the process because when you focus on the process, it'll take you to where you need to be. And it may not be something that you want in the current moment. It takes a long time to realize that you're not truly happy and it takes even longer to take the necessary steps to be happy. What you need to do is focus on the process and trust that the process that you created will bring you to where you need to be. And now going into the final step. Get uncomfortable. It's a must. It's a guarantee in this process. Getting uncomfortable is something that you have to accept. And being seen is freaking uncomfortable. When people see you, when people perceive you, when people look at you, it's uncomfortable. But one day, you're gonna walk into a store and someone's gonna look at you and you're not gonna wanna cry and hide in the corner. That's what I used to do. You don't have to feel that way, but you have to get uncomfortable. You can't expect people to see you if you don't change. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Not being perceived is just a lot easier than people seeing you not being seen is comfortable. Now that I'm getting older, I'm starting to realize that comfort, although it's a great thing to have, it tends to limit our ability as humans to grow. Humans are not made to stay the same. We thrive off changes. We thrive off evolution. Being stagnant in your life literally breaks down your body. If you sit around all day and you don't move your body, you'll lose muscle mass. If you don't use a language that you knew as a kid, you forget that language. If you don't challenge your brain every single day, your brain's cognitive functions slowly start to deteriorate. All these things happen when we decide to be comfortable. Those little moments of discomfort causes this huge chain reaction and it's a reaction that's negative to you. You don't have to do anything crazy. It's like James Clear said, 
get 1% better every day and you'll be 37 times better in a year. If you get coffee in the morning and you struggle with talking to people, start a conversation with the barista. Ask them how their day is. Ask them how their morning's been. Start a conversation. If you are afraid to be seen in the gym or you're afraid to try a new machine, try the new machine. Be wrong a thousand times and once you get it right, the effect of that is you knowing how to use that machine and you moving your body and benefiting your body. If you have a desired body type, start going to the gym. Go for 30 minutes. You don't have to go for two hours. I go for two hours now. I was not able to walk for an hour before, let alone do strength training, do cardio, do hot yoga, do hot Pilates. I work to be able to do that. Don't get mad when your day one isn't someone else's day 100. Focus on yourself. Comparison is the thief of joy. So get a little uncomfortable every day and you will see the change that is needed. It takes a lot of courage to let the real you be seen by the people around you. Your dreams and desires are just way too big to not be seen. And if people don't like that, then so fucking be it. Don't get over it. How people perceive you is not your problem. It's none of your business. As long as you're living the life that you desire and you are being who you want to be, that's the only thing that matters. So be seen and be heard and get uncomfortable. Because after all, there's nothing more beautiful and more perfect than the true you.